Okay, here's a game that I played. It's a five minute zero increment game. And just having a look at the if factor. Lots of ifs in the game of chess. If the opponent was stronger, then maybe we wouldn't have got away with certain positions. If I was stronger, you know, maybe I wouldn't have made certain moves or maybe I would have um, built on what I was actually creating to create more advantages. If I'd done the right move, if I'd done a better move, if the opponent had done the right move, if the opponent had done the better move, lots of ifs, buts and maybes in chess. So whatever transpires in the game of chess is what transpires in the game of chess. You could have the strongest player um, that you're playing against but they may be having a bad day or they just don't know how to treat playing against yourself um, because your style or system is a little bit different or maybe it's too basic for them so they don't understand how to play against basic chess so they get a bit arty so your basic chess kind of stalls their flair their ingenuity type thing so there's all different types of ifs buts and maybes in the game of chess at any given moment any given time anybody can blunder in the game of chess no matter who you are if i'm playing a 1900 and they make errors then those errors are not my fault the errors are the opponent's faults so we have to bear these things in mind because unless we're playing somebody who's like a computerized type thing or you're playing a super elite GM type player I mean even then they they're only human at the end of the day and they can make mistakes so it's really about building on maybe your knowledge of understanding what mistakes that you've made and if you've got time to correct it in the game then so be it. So I'm going to play this game. Um, this is a recording of the game that I have played so it's got the evaluation bar in there and it's a five minute game. The timestamps are here and here just at the top right and the bottom right. So you can see the sort of time scales that we're working with. So throughout this game here, um, I'll be pausing at maybe crucial points where basically, you know, things may could have gone a little bit better. So as you can see, we're just developing the nice out nice and steadily. It is a five minute game, so it's fairly quick. So pushing through at this moment time with the pawn, making space for um, castling. Obviously the opponent's wanting to actually challenge us, so we're going to obviously take this pawn to get it out of the way. But we can't move the knight just yet, we need to support. So it's all basic chest, nice, simple, basic chest. This pawn doesn't have any protection, but our king at the minute hasn't got castled, probably not wanting to get into the, any situation with the rook. So a lot of exchanges going off here, all simple, basic stuff. And now it's fairly comfortable for us, Obviously, we're not going to be chomping at the bit to get this pawn just yet because obviously the rook, the knight is supporting as well. King's safety is important. As you can see, the gaze bar showing the opponent is um, winning at this moment in time. We bring our rook now supporting x-ray through to their rook. So they bring the bishop out. So at this moment in time, it's looking drawish but more advantageous to black at this moment in time. So bringing the queen off of the back, looking to protect the pawn as well, because at some point it's potentially going to get attacked. But it's also making space for the rooks, linking them up. So we've got options of either owning the B file or coming across and looking to um, control the D file, E file. So we bring the rook across, attacking this pawn, which has got no protection on it. The knight doesn't have any protection at the moment, but we can't get to it. So... At this moment in time, looking to put pressure towards the king area and the bishop doesn't have any protection on at the moment. So if they fall asleep, then we could actually get the bishop off the board. But as you can see, the gauge bar showing that um, black is still winning. So we haven't found the best position possible. So the bishops come back, so the knight could go and attack, but the queen is attacking the queen. So do we take the queen off the board to simplify, keep it nice and simple, or do we try and get a little bit arty? 
we have a two on one but he's got three people protecting that pawn so it probably would make sense at this moment in time the evaluation bar is showing a draw so we take the queen off the board simplifying as best possible so now it's looking to see who can own what files with our rooks that's what's going on in the back of my head so we attack the bishop because knights hunt the bishops in our mantra so that makes sense pretty simple but always in the back of my head who's going to be owning what files with these rooks so the opponent does exactly what we're thinking they're thinking right let's get owning this file and get supporting so we take the bishop off the board to disturb the pawns around the king area so that all makes sense this knight doesn't have any protection on it so we're looking long term maybe the oops sorry uh, bishop coming here to attack the um, knight because it has no protection if the knight does move then the bishop can go and attack the rook to upset the rhythm of their ownership of this file so little things like that um, as you can see the evaluation bar is still showing black as winning uh, it's not a major win by any means it's um, neither here nor there so the knight's done a really good job because it's blocked off the actual attack position that we wanted with our bishop but we do have a spot here to attack the king so just a little touch on the king a little check just to let them know that we're still in the game also allows our bishop to come across and keep that diagonal so preventing the king from moving so now we're looking to try and gain some ownership of this file and you can see the opponent knows exactly what we're trying to do so they're trying to avoid us getting the pressure on this e-file so we bring the bishop back so it's managing this square nicely in front of the king and also at the side of the king so that our idea is obviously to get our rook to e1 so we can potentially get doubled up on here and maybe start looking to touch these pawns and get them out of the way and if the rhythm works for us we might be able to get a rook for free so we bring the rook across now looking oh i keep doing that i can't do the arrows it's a recording um so looking potentially to maybe drive the rook across here put a check on the king and maybe get the rook off that way so in essence at this moment in time it's showing that we're actually winning here from this position so feeling fairly good about this so we put the check on and we can obviously get the rook off the board don't need to be too arty now we have an x-ray through to their king obviously the king's moved now with the bishop so we can now trade down feeling fairly comfortable about the position because their king is further back than ours so that smallest of tempo i'm thinking okay we can drive our king up and um start attacking some pawns a nice aggressive king i'm a bit miffed about my rook though I'm, I'm not really too happy with my rook here because it's not got anything to attack i'm hoping that they just push this pawn and forget themselves but the rook is defending this pawn so as you can see our king is getting very active at this moment so the higher up up the board our king can get the more i felt that we will get in more advantageous uh, position not really looking for them to take but if they did take that's fine really wanted to get the pawn pushed up but now he's um, pushed his pawn down we may look to get the rook involved maybe push the pawn up and this move here let's just give that a bit of a pause this move here um, we've got two minutes of time and I had in the back of my head that somehow okay I'm going to get the king to be moving away from the rook if they forget themselves and they move their king away then we can take the rook off the board so to me that was not as i'd placed the king there i, I realized well that didn't feel right i shouldn't have done that move what other move could i have done you know there was a better move as you can see the gauge bar showing well that wasn't right and at that time i knew it wasn't right so I'd made an erroneous manoeuvre, but how was I going to get back from that? It wasn't too major for me during the game, it wasn't too major. I was just a bit miffed that my rook really isn't in the game. And now what the pawns are going to be attacking, if they do take, then we're fairly comfortable that we can work with them. So the subliminal attack is that, oh, I'm going to get this rook for free somehow at some point at some stage during the game. I was thinking pushing this pawn here and then if the king takes, then we would get the rook off the board but obviously they're not asleep but sometimes it can happen all right so we start pushing the pawns up uh, so it was like a bit of forward thinking in terms of okay well let's see what the opponent does and if it had worked then it would have been a mirac miraculous position for us to be in 
and we would have been celebrating going yes we did a fantastic almost kind of tactical type move even though we're not tactical players um it's more a positional type attack in terms of well the expectation would be that if it was moving real quick then it does take then we do get the rook off the board would have been magic Now we're looking to try and disturb the pawn structure around here, maybe trying to get the rook around the back and get some upset on the king, because our rook isn't in the game at the moment. Now we're thinking his rook's going to come around the back here, looking to attack the pawn. Do we want to allow that to happen? Or are our pawns fast enough to get up? So now we're looking, if he does move across, then we'll have a two on one with the rook. But now this is going to allow our king potentially to start attacking their pawns on the other side of the board if we're allowed to. So they've moved again but our rook can't actually take this pawn because there's no longer a two on one. So the rook now defends the pawn. So their position is fairly okay in terms of defending. Gage bar showing that we're slightly winning but I would say it's never here nor there. And I need to get my rook involved somehow. This pawn is stuck by itself, get the king back again. Still looking to try and put some pressure on this pawn, giving, this, giving the opponent something to think about. So it could peter out to be a draw. So we attack the pawn, looking to maybe get rid of all these pawns on this side and then start focusing on these pawns that we've got here centrally. So the rook comes across and at this point, it's a matter of trying to gain more control. I could have taken, taken, but then he's got two pawns on the side. His rook is really struggling, and they look like they're struggling to find good position. We're still attempting to try and get this pawn, but it's not going to work because he's just going to keep putting checks on us. So it's showing that we're winning at this moment, and that move was not the best move, but it's still showing we're advantageous. So we're grabbing, grabbing, we're trying to get rid of the pawns. The tactic of getting, well, technique of getting rid of these pawns didn't work. So we're trying to obliterate the center a little bit. Mindful the rook looking potentially to come here, to come here, to put a check on the king with the support from their pawn. But it's showing that we're kind of out and out winning at this point in time. And their seconds are running down. So I can take my time on my manoeuvres now because it's only got 0 0.07 seconds left. So in essence, I could really just do any, any type of move. I wanted it to be a nice move. It's worse when you take your time and the person's down a few seconds, then it takes a while for their brain to register. So this is like a technique that you can use in blip bullet type uh, games. So this is like a bullet scenario here now. So as you can see, just taking my time, nice and steady. Now we can push onto the rook. They've only got a few seconds left, four seconds left, as you can see on the tally, if they take, but we can support the pawn. So all it is now is just playing solid defense work. And at this point, their time ran out. So all in all, the if, buts and maybes in this particular game, um, if I had done maybe a more appropriate king move or no king move at all during the game um, in the early part of that game coming up towards attacking the rook maybe I would have been in a better position but the actual fact is the opponent didn't find the golden move which ever gave them the better advantage and that is always something that I look at in the evaluations because I can play some ugly games of chess where nothing is working and the position is totally shot. My pieces aren't working together and I'm sat there thinking, how did I get into this position? Of all the years I've been playing chess, how did I end up in this position? And when the opponent doesn't take advantage of whatever advantage that they have, as you could see in this particular game, the opponent had the advantage of the rook being in the center of the board, but my king moving, it was an erroneous move, so it gave them a high advantage. Whatever move it was that they needed to make, the opponent didn't make it. So it goes back again to the beginning of the video where if the opponent was stronger, 
then yes, we probably would have been taken to town and we would have lost. If I was stronger and found better positions, then I probably would have been able to get better advantages in the game. These things didn't happen. What happened was there was, hopefully in my eyes anyway, solid basic chess manoeuvres, playing the art of chess, not being too flowery, understanding the basics of position, what the pieces can actually do, what pieces can support which pieces, looking at the pawn formations, looking at, well, who is going to gain more advantage with the position of the pieces that we place, are we winning the tempos? Are we driving the initiative? And plus, at the end of the day, are we basically just holistically better towards the end game? And in this particular game here, this showed that there's nothing flowery, there's nothing arty about it. There was fighting for the initiatives, there was the aggressive king, and um, position player was then being played quite nicely. As you could see, the gauge bar was even Stevens throughout most of the game. And when the opponent had their advantage, because they didn't take advantage of whatever it was, we then slowly started to gain advantage. And we started to regroup and slowly but surely find the better positions. So if, but, maybe, it's all about what actually happens on the board. No matter what grade level, etc. you are, if you aren't doing the right stuff at the right time, at the right moment, it's your fault. Look at what you're doing, reassess, regroup, and if you still can do that in the game, then you're gonna have a more enjoyable game and you're not going to be feeling that um, somehow the opponent used magic on you, etc. Really got to look at your games, understand what you're actually doing, don't care what level you are, um, and from there, enjoy your game of chess. Still up the night. Expect that I thought the knight was gonna. So, did he get a pawn then? No, he's just um, he's attacking this pawn. Now it's got no protection on. Bishop wants to get out, king needs to get castled. Yeah, now it's got no protection. Let's attack the bishop. might be a factor in this game so let's just take it easy just get some half decent position just attempt to block off whatever it is that they're trying to do to us maybe this here oh exact move <laughs> isn't it funny um Let's just bring the knight up. Can't go there just yet. I suppose it can give the king some company if we, if we get castle. It's just blasting through. This bishop does have a check on. Or we could do a, yeah, let's take with the bishop because he's just gonna push again. Oh man, we could have taken with the knight actually. Would have taken with the knight, would have been able to take there. Let's take time wise now. Let's just take everything off the board. Let's just see what the bishop wants to do. Oh, you are having a laugh. Did you see that? Oh, very smooth. Piece for a piece. I 
don't really think it improved their position on the board. And he's given up. Why, why didn't he go for the rook? I, like I was saying, I don't think it improved their position on the board if he had taken. Um, not sure about any of this, so the bishop now disappears. That was probably a little bit too arty, I think. Looking to trap me because king can't go here, can't go here. Think, think, think. Could come back, but then the knight just moves somewhere to take. Maybe the bishop is going to have a two on one and he'll have a check on the king. Yeah, so that's quite magical, isn't it? Hmm. My time is running out. I haven't got a magical move. Um, I'm going to attack his knight. I think the rook is still coming here. But then we can just... Well, sorry, this rook will come here. Yeah. And... Still in that same situation, aren't I? I can't go here. I have to go here. He's going to get the bishop. Oh... Still fell into it no matter how. <laughs> oh dear me, still fell into it no matter what I did. Let's go here. Oh dear, let's attack this pawn. It's caught up on time and everything now. That was my one key advantage at the time. He's manic with this knight. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Is this position any good though? That's the question. Come on. Oh, do you know my rook? Eee, buddy. Check on the king. Ten seconds, time still on our side. The king's got a bit of protection. And don't think too much now, let's just attack the knight. Let's take the knight off the board. And we're on time. Okay, yeah, sketchy, but I think these types of games are the ones where it is quite nice to just have a look at the board and see if the position is really that scary. I think that because this opponent did a few single attacks, he could have got our rook off the board, but like I said, I don't, it didn't look like it would improve their position. It's like a piece for a piece would get the rook off. He still had to develop his other pieces. That was what I was thinking anyway. But you never know. What happened in the game was, was what happened in the game and the opponent lost on time because they couldn't find the killer moves so yeah interesting game let's just bring the bishop out like we do stopping the knight it's coming anyway so we get a free knight unless of course i'm falling for something <laughs> Am I falling for something? I'm not used to this. If I leave the knight there, just take the bishop. Queen is by itself, so it can't take. Um, just, just, what have we got? Bring the knight across, attacking the queen. It's attacking the knight. Bring it here or attack here. No, it can't go there. I'm gonna have to dance the knight. It's gonna push the ball on one of these. No, it's not doing. Castle, time. So he is hitting it. Um, I think I'm just moving over to the give my king some company and just push the pawn. Open up the bishop. Obviously, I don't think I'm going to do that because the pawn's just going to drop. So it's on me again. Let's hit his knight. Bishop's hitting the everything's hitting everything here. And 
and uh, take the knight. Rook's coming for the queen, yep, okay. Keep the king with some company because this player looks a little bit crazy to me. And can't go there. It's coming for the pawn. It's coming for the rook. Damn! Oh, he moved too fast. <laughs> he moved too fast, but he's still got the rook. I'm going to let him have the rook. Yeah. Oh, well, it doesn't want it now. Okay, fair enough. behind on time as well it's because they went crazy didn't they just shooting stuff out oh dear let's attack the rook taking the pawn at the same time and this rook it's not defended this one it's no checkmate is it let's grab Beginning of that open, I thought that was some sort of set play thing. Um, still not on, but can't go here. Put a mini check on the king for now. And let's. Should we? Maybe not. Let's attack the rook. Maybe go for the pawn, I'm not too sure. This is the slowest they've moved. And it looks like they've left the game. Let's click victory on that one. That was a bit frantic.